click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about the database system and its need. Why do you need to inherit a database management system rather than a file processing system? What are the advantages of a DBMS or a database management system on a particular file processing system? Say for an example, from an earlier chat, when we talk about storing an example of university, so we had to store all the information of the students, their address like the personal data or the phone number, contact, email ID and all, their education details like the past education, the enrollment of the courses, and the fee structure of that particular student and again the finance department which will store the, the payment department of the success and unsuccessful of that particular student. So all this data should be there and kept of that department wise. So when we add new student to that department, so we have to add a new file to that particular department. Or for a student, if we want to add another subject, then we have to add another file on that particular subject to the student. Previously introduction to the DBMS, this type of processing was meant by this file type processing. In this file type processing, every information is getting stored in a file and then the file is attached to another file to actually get the data access and retrieved. Now the main problem of this file type processing that we will discuss today is the basic need of this database system. So the first type of this disadvantage in a file type processing is the data redundancy and inconsistency. When we talk about data redundancy, that means the duplication of data. Say for an example that a particular student has two of the department music and maths. So whenever the student's personal data like the address, contact number, email ID is getting added to the music department, they have to be added to the maths department too. So in the maths department, whenever we are adding up the data, it may cause that the contact number of the particular student gets changed. So we need to update it in the music department as well as the maths department. If there is an error and only the maths department file is getting updated, so the music department will consist an inconsistent data on that particular student. So the data redundancy and inconsistency problem lies and it is a big and important issue of this file type of processing. The next type is the difficulty of the accessing data. So whenever every information is stored in the files, so when we retrieve the information on that particular enterprise on relevant information, then we must fetch it from the file to file. Say for an example, if a clerk is asked to get information on a particular student who has scored a credit score 60 in all the subjects. So as all the departments are stored in another files and another files, so the important programs of that particular application and the clerk is used to ask of two choices. One, he should get all the information of that particular student on the departments and then sort it out for the credit hours of 60. Or the other choice is he actually made a customized application program which can retrieve the information likewise. So whenever these two choices are obviously unsatisfactory because both of these choices will require an extremely tedious work and that will not help the enterprise to actually get any useful turn. 
Say, if another constraint is done, set for particular student of that credit house of 60 and the students who are requested and located in a particular postal code. So we again have to make another application program. Other than that, we again have to fetch all the data for the department and then sort it out again. So after that, we can actually use the data for the particular use of the clock. So this is very inconsistent and difficult to access data in this file type of processing. Next problem is the data isolation. As we know and have discussed that all the information are stored in files, so we can say that the data are isolated and scattered throughout the files. So, if we need a particular data that is being stored in many different files, so we need to update it in many different files, other than that, the isolation could cause a serious problem or damage to the particular system. The next type of problem is the integrity problem. Sometimes when we are storing information against a particular relevance of information, so we need to store it with a consistency constraint. We will declare it with an example. When we say that the university is maintaining accounts department for each of the particular subjects, so, and we are adding up a consistency constraint that the accounts may never reach below zero amount of that particular department. Now it is maintained over a particular application program and the file is sorted and stored in a particular way. Now, if another constraint is added up to that program, that suppose say that the accounts department of every subject must not cross the limit of 1 lakh, then it will be problematic because already one consistent constraint is there and every file of each of the department need to get updated of that particular data that another consistency constraint is multi-valued. So this problem doubled up and grow when there are many consistency constraints that is being added to the data and the data are of different types too. Say for example, the university names can contain student name, the phone number, address, roll number, so all of a different data type. So if the constraint is of this each different data type, then it will cause an integrity problem or the consistency problem on that particular files. The next part is the important part that is the data accessing part. When we are accessing the data, the main problem is the atomicity. Atomicity problem lies behind every file processing system that is one transaction needed to be done at once and it cannot be interrupted with any other transactions. So in file processing this type of consistency is difficult to maintain or other than that we can say that it is absolutely not possible to maintain this type of atomicity. Say for an example that an university department A and B have two accounts of each of it. Now A wants to update that $500 needs to get transferred to account B. So in the midst of that updation or the transaction where A is been deducted $500 and the transaction get interrupted because of the information that is being stored in another file. So, the B is not getting that $500 updation, but it has been deducted from $A. So, this caused a serious damage on the transaction department and the database is needed to control this type of atomicity. The next problem that we will face is the atomicities related problem and that is called this inconsistency in concurrent transaction. Now, if we talk about this atomicity in details that the university is transferring and it has got a main account. Now, it has got several departments of each of them account. So, account A department and B department want to access the university main account at the same time. Say that the university main account has a particular balance of $10,000. 
Now a department A want to fetch a dollar five hundred from the main account and B a dollar hundred from a main account, and they both transact with the main account at the same time. So for A the result will be ten thousand minus five hundred that is nine thousand five hundred dollar, and for B it will be ten thousand minus hundred that is nine thousand and nine hundred dollar. So both of them are getting incorrect data because the actual result will be nine thousand four hundred because A and B has both deducted. So they are actually getting a wrong information on the main account, and that causes the actual concurrent execution of the transaction problem. Say for another example that the university has got a consistency constraint that the number of students that is getting admitted cannot cross the limit of forty. Now two students are applying at the stage of thirty nine and at the same time. So one student will get updated with the value of forty that is countable to plus one, and another student also get the value of thirty nine plus one forty. But the actual result is forty one, which is destroying the consistency constraint or breaking the rules of that particular university. So in this way, concurrent execution on a particular transaction can cause problems if the data is stored in that particular file system. If a database system is maintained against all the information, then this type of problem could be easily solved and avoided. Next issue is the security issue. For security issues, we must say that not every user on a particular enterprise can access every information on that enterprise. Say for a finance department, it should only access that what are the payroll checks, what are the taxes and salaries on a particular employee or a student. They must not have the personal details like the education details on that particular employee or a student. So this type of security breaches can be there in the file type of processing because every file is scattered throughout the system. So we are not maintaining a database or a controlled and connected database system. So that arises all the needs for this database, and that are the purpose of database system that should solve all the problems of a particular file type processing, and then give all accesses in a neatful and meaningful organized way to that database system. So that is all for all the purposes on a database system. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.